So when we're trying to find areas between standard deviations or Z scores, so now I have a Z value of 1.62 or 1.62 standard deviations from the mean, and then I've got a Z value of negative 1.35 or negative 1.35 standard deviations from the mean, and I wanna know what the area is between those two particular Z values, then you know, I can go to the table again and find these areas. So for these particular uh, Z values, I can look in the book and find out what those areas are to the left and find out this area. So I could just take off you know, this area from the right and then I could take this area off of the left and what's left in between out of 100% is going to be my area, which turns out to be 85.89%. So this is pretty, uh, like I said, it's pretty important to understand this when we get into hypothesis testing. So of course there's uh, more, um, more exercises for you to do. So in this particular case here, I'm looking for the area uh, to the right of the mean up to a Z value of 2.53. So there's, there's kind of a little bit of a, uh, there's a little bit of a uh, formula here for us to look at. What the P means is a probability. The probability that this particular Z value lies between these two uh, particular parameters. So we're just gonna use our particular uh, values of Z, and this one is gonna be 1.73 and 1.98. Uh, so and this is 2.53. So these are just uh, some, some things for you to practice. Uh, like I say, looking at those scores in the back of the book. The value of 2.53 uh, basically is 99.43, and of course zero is 50%. So you can just take that 50% off of 9.93 and find out what the area is here, the area is here, and the area is here. So this is 50%, and this looks like it's gonna be 49.43%. So that's kind of where you're finding all these percentages. I'm gonna be a little more you know, lenient on these percentages. I'm not gonna make you do the, the math. I'm just gonna make see if you're understanding what the concepts are on these quizzes. And so here's another value of 1.73. Think of it as in standard deviations from the mean. So we know that there's 50% over here already. And now I just have to find out what, you know, 1.73 is. Yeah, in the table in the back of the book, you just look that up and you will find a value of 95.82% of the total area from this particular z-score. Okay, and again, this is pretty much the same thing, finding you know, what that particular z-value is, and this one is going to be uh, a z-value, uh, or you can actually find out what uh, your Z value is if you know what X is. So uh, to find the Z value, such so the area under the standard normal curve. So if you already know what the particular area is, you can convert that back into a Z score and find out what your Z score is. I'm not gonna ask you to do that on the quiz or the test, but you can do it if you, if you need to. I don't, I, I've never really needed to do these things because um, for one thing, your computers and everything basically do that for you, but it's just a good idea to know how to look these things up. So when we're looking up Z values, we're gonna take the first digit in this particular case. So uh, 0.5 is gonna be half. So if I'm gonna look up a particular Z value, um, so the area is going to be 0 0.7, uh, 0 0.7123. Then I'll look for that value inside of my, uh, my particular table here. So I would start with this first digit, 7, and uh, then I'd go to my next digit, which would be uh, 1, 
two, so one, so that I would come down and I would find that particular value. Um, so uh, what they did here is they just came to 50% and they added the 0 0.06 uh, and they start with that particular, and you'll have a bunch of uh, values here. So you would just find that value and find out what your particular Z score is uh, for that value. So the Z value for this one is 0.56. So the Z value is 0.5 and the second digit is six. And this value is in a matrix of numbers. So once you find that, you can find out what your Z score is. And vice versa, if you had area or if you had a Z score, you could find the area under that particular score as well. You'd come down and find the first digit and then the sec second digit, and then you could find the area in that particular table. They're pretty easy to use once you get used to them. Applications, the standard normal distribution curve can be used to solve a, a wide variety of practical problems. The only requirement is that the variable be normally or approximately normally distributed. So basically we have to assume uh, that these things are normally distributed because sometimes when we take samples, <clears throat> we have to generalize to a population and then we have to make some adjustments we have to we have to uh, we have to basically guess on what the uh, the population standard deviation is, and we use a standard error of measurement to do that, or standard error of the mean, and we basically assume that the uh, distributions are normal. So for all the problems presented in this chapter, you can assume that the variable is normally distributed. So we do a lot of assumptions. Uh, here again is the uh, formula, so we take the value of x, some particular score that you're looking for, and we subtract the, the mean, the population mean, and then we divide the standard deviation from that, and we get an actual standard z-score. <clears throat> so this particular uh, case here, uh, we have 5.4 is the actual score that, we're, that we get. And we know that our population mean is 5.2, and we know that the standard deviation is 0.3, so we'll, or we will divide uh, 0.3 from our value of 5.4 minus 5.2, which is 0.2. That will give us a total value of z, which is 0.67. And since it's not a negative number, we know that 0.67 would be a, just a little more than one half of a standard deviation. So that makes sense that it would be right there. All right, so, and here's kind of an example. Each month, an American household generates an average of 28 pounds of newspaper for garbage or recycling. Uh, assume the variable is approximately normal and the standard deviation is two pounds. So these are some of the things that I've given you in your uh, homework and that are gonna be on the test. Uh, it should be a little easier to figure out than this, but uh, let's take a look at this one. The household is uh, selected at random, so random sampling is, it plays a part. Find the probability of, of its generating between 27 and 31 pounds per month, and then more than 30.2 uh, pounds per month. And by using those tables, it's very easy to identify uh, the area or how much uh, garbage or recycling in pounds is produced each month. And you would use your z-scores and the formulas to find out those particular um, z-values. And then you go to the table and you would find out exactly what those particular values would be. Um, and then here's another example, a desktop PC uses about 120 watts of electricity per hour based on four hours of use per day. Uh, so you have your, <coughs> your, um, your, your mean, and then we have a standard deviation of six. So those are the two, the two values you have to have in order to solve these problems. And that's what I'm going to give you in the examples that I've given you. So for the Z value of, uh, oops, the Z value of 106. So I'm gonna have to 
convert that 106 into an actual Z score. And what we've done is we found that out based on 106 uh, units of electricity to a mean of 120. We subtract that and we get a negative value. We divide it by six, the standard deviation, and we have a negative 2.33 and then we can actually go to the table and find out what's left of that, subtract that by 100%, and then we know the area um, in percentages of that. Oops, I'm going backwards. And so we can see that it's, it's less than uh, a, thou a thousandth of a percent. Uh, so it's like 99. Nine or something like that. Uh, so approximately five PCs use less than 106 watts of electricity. Uh, and then there's a couple more. I, I'm not going to go over each one of them with you, but what I want to do, uh, I want to take a few of the, the the questions on the quiz real quick and go over those.